Welcome back to the CoinChimp YouTube channel. Today we're exploring how to create NFTs on the Caspa network using the KRC721 standard. From uploading your artwork to defining unique attributes or adding utility, we'll show you the resources you need to build apps for deploying and minting your NFT assets. Whether you're an experienced developer or just starting out, this tutorial is perfect for creators and developers of all experience levels. You can choose to create a single unique image that can be minted multiple times until the maximum supply is reached, or design every token in the NFT collection as a unique image with its own distinct attributes, like different traits. In both cases, all tokens are tied to the same ticker. Creating NFTs with unique images and traits enhances rarity, value, and engagement. Each token becomes distinct, appealing to collectors while fostering a sense of ownership and enabling utilities like gamification, or personalized experiences. However, this approach requires more effort in art creation and metadata definition. Thankfully, tools like artificial intelligence and programmable IPFS storage can simplify the process. As I mentioned in a previous KRC721 video, high-resolution images can be challenging to store directly on chain. With KRC721, however, all media files are stored on IPFS freeing the chain from unnecessary and inefficient data loads. If you choose option one, metadata on chain, creating a single image for all tokens and storing metadata on chain, you'll be limited to 520 bytes of data, which includes the rest of the script instructions. This limits the number of attributes you can add, but is ideal for utility-based NFTs, such as those granting special access to services. It also simplifies the creation and design process. Alternatively, with option two, metadata of chain, creating unique images and multiple attributes for each token. You'll need to store both the media and metadata directly on IPFS. While this adds flexibility and uniqueness to each token, the creation and design process will be more time consuming and complex. IPFS, or the Interplanetary File System, is a decentralized storage protocol designed to make the web more permanent and secure. Unlike centralized servers, IPFS uses a distributed network of nodes to store and share files. Each file on IPFS is assigned a unique content identifier, CID, which acts as a digital fingerprint. The beauty of this system, once a file is added to IPFS, it becomes immutable, meaning its content cannot be altered without generating a new CID. This immutability is crucial for NFTs. By storing your images and metadata on IPFS, you ensure they remain secure, accessible, and tamper-proof. Even if a hosting provider goes offline, your NFT data is safe as long as the CID exists in the IPFS network. Additionally, the KRC721 standard mandates IPFS as the repository for images, meaning media cannot be stored directly on the chain. Whether you opt for one image shared across all tokens or unique images for each token, the IPFS CID will be permanently stored on the blockchain and cannot be changed after deployment. Option one, for a single image across all tokens, upload the file to IPFS and include its CID in the metadata during deployment. This requires uploading just one media file and using the generated CID. Option two, for unique images for each token, you'll need to create individual metadata files for each token, each referencing is specific image CID. For example, if you have a maximum supply of 10, upload 10 images to IPFS, resulting in 10 CIDs. Then create 10 metadata files in JSON format with each file linking the correct image CID to its respective token. Upload all metadata files as a group, maintaining the correct sequence. I covered this option in a future video. For this tutorial, I'll focus on option one. Before deploying, test the accessibility of your uploaded files through an IPFS gateway to ensure everything works correctly. Once deployed, the data cannot be modified. KRC721 is CASPA's standard for creating and managing non-fungible tokens. Here's what makes it special. 
He leverages Caspa's high-performance proof-of-work network for decentralization and security, offers flexible metadata storage options on-chain or off-chain using IPFS, and supports advanced features like pre-minting, royalty payments, and discounted minting. These features enable the creation of unique, scalable NFT collections while keeping the Caspa chain efficient and fast. KRC721 operates through a commit and reveal process with three key operations, deploy, mint, and transfer. When an operation is submitted to the chain and validated, the KRC721 indexer reads the data and makes it accessible via APIs. This allows users to verify operations, check token statuses, and track activities such as pre-minting or remaining mintable supply. However, a deploy operation can succeed on the chain but fail in the indexer due to data formatting issues. That's why it's crucial to connect to the indexer API uh, after deployment to confirm the status of your operation. Once tokens are deployed and minting begins, they can also be transferred by anyone who mints them. After all, tokens in a collection are minted, they can only be transferred. Marketplaces act as intermediaries for selling tokens, requiring them to be transferred to marketplace wallets for custody and later to buyers after the transaction is completed. In this section, we'll walk through deploying and minting an NFT using KRC721, Caspa's NFT standard. This tutorial is designed for developers of all experience levels and will use two open source TypeScript applications available on GitHub. These applications utilize WASM technology developed by the Caspa core team. For additional details, refer to the documentation linked in, in the description. To deploy an NFT, you'll submit a deploy operation with the following parameters. Ticker. This is the unique identifier for your NFT, such as Chimp. Image. The URI of your image, typically hosted on IPFS for decentralized storage. Private key. Required to sign the transaction. Be cautious. Never share your private key as it grants access to your funds and assets. Other parameters. These include settings such as total supply, royalty fees, pre-minting options, and more. For this demonstration, I'll deploy an NFT using the ticker TCGM7. The supply is set to a default of 100,000, which is pre-configured in the app. You can change it, adding the switch max and the new value at the, uh, at the command line. I'll also provide the image, URI, and my private key to sign the transaction. The process involves two key steps, commit and reveal transactions. Once deployed, you can use either the reveal transaction ID or the ticker to verify the status of your deployment through the KRC721 indexer API. The indexer ensures that you, your deployment is validated and accessible on the network. After successfully deploying your NFT, you can begin minting individual tokens. Each mint operation generates a unique token ID for the NFT. You can either specify a recipient wallet address or leave it blank in which case the tokens that will default to your own wallet address. For this demonstration, I mint tokens using the ticker TCChimp7 with the loop feature enabled to create 10 tokens uh, consecutively. This functionality simplifies bulk minting for larger token sets. Once the minting process is complete, I'll check the list of NFTs associated with my wallet address. Notice how the minted tokens are assigned unique token IDs which are generated randomly rather than uh, sequentially. Remember to explore the resources and API documentation linked in the description to go deeper into the world of KRC721 on Caspa. And thank you for watching. I hope you found this content valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials and insights like this. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the latest developments in this technology and beyond. Let's keep exploring and learning together. Until the next time, cheers.